It was a tragic attack in Surrey last Thursday, which saw several dogs turn on their walker and kill her. But it's reminded the professional dog walkers of the dangers that dogs in groups can represent. It can all seem very peaceful until it isn't, and the dog's instincts kick in, overriding any training or discipline they might have. Lessons will undoubtedly have to be learned from this uh, horrific case in Caterham. I spoke to Colin Tennant, former police officer, director of the Cambridge Institute of Dog Behaviour and Training, who told me about the challenge of keeping dogs under control. I want to say firstly that somebody, as in this case, who's died, this is extremely rare. Why would dogs turn on the, the owner? So if the owner tries to control them and they will resist, what does it take for them to turn on the owner? First of all, when fights take place, what happens is the dogs go into an intent. They focus on the dog and the dog who's being attacked focuses on the dog that's attacking it. The instinct of most humans is to protect their dog. So naturally, people quickly go down to try and grab a dog, their dog to pull it away or the other dog to get it off their dog. And remember where this is going on, there's teeth and jaws flashing. There's the cacophony of sound and aggression. And in nearly all cases that I come across in the criminal courts, which is where I work, people get bitten and they get bitten badly. And so your question was, why would they bite you? In that intensity, they're not aware they're biting you. This is, an, again, in a millisecond at the speed they move. Yeah, we, we, we don't want to kind of make the dog sound as though it's thinking because the dog actually really isn't thinking. It's just jumping, really. No, it's yeah. just it, it's an innate drive. And also when you pull the dog and it turns around, as it's turning in that minute second, the other dog could be crunching on a part of its body that's giving it intense pain. And then it's reacting to the pain. How many dogs is a controllable number. I mean, obviously, it does depend on the, t the size of the dogs and the temperament of the dogs. But, but I mean, clearly half a dozen is going to be very difficult control to control if it goes wrong. Fine if it's all peaceful, but not if it, if it goes wrong. Well, I've trained 20,000 dogs of all breeds, and I can't manage six dogs when they, when they start to go into a fight mode. How many could you control? So, I think two, two on the larger size, two unless you're a highly skilled trainer. So most people are not, most dog walkers are not. But I can't just say two, because if you had two small dogs, you could probably manage four. Mm. But if you've got them all on lead, say, some people now clip four leads to them and they're running around the park getting exercise or walking with four dogs. Now, if a dog crashed into them in, a, in, a, in an angry raid, those leads would be wrapped around that person's body and basically they'd be just tied up and on the floor in seconds. And one point I would make, it is, again, going back not specifically to this case, but for somebody to be killed, which is extremely rare, that person would have had to have been on the floor. And maybe they tangled. Would have to have been and, on the floor. And, and we don't know what happened in this case, but obviously... I, 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 and they'd have already been bitten badly in many parts. So, so don't have so many dogs that you'll be pulled over, that they can pull you over, because then you really can lose control very quickly. The rule is don't have more dogs than you can manage when things go wrong. Let's just take a couple of situations and how people should react. Let's take the less extreme situation. You've got your dog and then someone's got another, say, four dogs and those dogs are being very aggressive to your dog or at worst getting into a fight. What do you do there? Because you've you've said that, you know, if you put your hand in to try and pick your dog out of the fight, it, it, you may just get very badly bitten. There's two things there. There's what the instinct that people do without thinking. So that's the innate drive in humans. We, we put our hands in. A person who maybe has listened to this would realize not to put the hands in and try and pick up the lead of the dog still attached to the lead. So if your dog's still attached to the lead, you can pick up the end of the lead rather than put your hands in the dog melee and pull your dog apart. But that's not always easy. Well, that was Colin Tennant uh, of the Cambridge Institute of Dog Behaviour and Training.